So, I met with Kyle Cease today, and I am, mmm, I'm wide open, folks. Like, he was challenging my lentil, my lentils, lentils are delicious. My mental limitations to a degree that I'm not used to, and I'm so appreciative of that for him to take the time. I went to his three-day seminar, and it was life-changing, so... He's the reason why I quit my job, which was a huge, 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 huge jump for me to take. And he took the time to speak with me today for Speak Real. So, again folks, sit back, enjoy. This is gonna be a great interview. So check it out. Kyle Cease, everybody, yay! Yeah. Yeah, but remember that, how weird that was? Like the one guy that kept saying you and me an apology in the house, the weird bearded guy that in the house that he was renting from Olive Oil's parents. That I remember it that and Mike This guy just kept going, you owe me an apology. And then the weird tax guy that wanted taxes for everything. Like, that's a 10 cent sitting down tax, you know, and why would I give you that? 10, second, 10 cent question tax, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Popeye was a cartoon movie. It was just that if a cartoon was an not animated. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Robin Williams, man, mm. he was amazing. Mm. We can talk about that if you want. I got a lot to say about it. Sure. Yeah, please. Basically, whatever you... And it's it's funny for me to phrase this to you because, I mean, you're essentially the person who showed me this concept of, like, just completely tapping into and feeling what you're saying and just speaking it. So, like, I don't even... Generally, I preface it, but I, and I just kind of did, but, like, whatever you're feeling, that's basically the topic. Uh, well, do you have a question? Do you have a thought or a question that you want to... Because it's, what I'm feeling is just, t today I'm just kind of feeling a letting go and a, a connection to myself a little more. And yeah. that's such a vague thing to tell people. Like, yeah. it's just I connect to myself, but it's so funny how meaningful it is here yeah. to realize that um, most people are often moving with their mind in a strategy. Yeah. Like, they're going, how do I get this and this and this? And I think that, you know, I don't know when people are going to watch this, but it's <laughs> two days after Robin Williams committed suicide. Yeah. And I think that what's so amazing about that, as painful as it's been, is it's proof that your happiness does not come from external circumstances. Because he's accomplished a lot. Even in contribution, he's accomplished a ton. Like he gave to St. Jude's and, and, and spoke for the troops. 90,000 90, troops have seen him live. He's gone out to Iraq and Afghanistan, performed, didn't tell anyone about it, always huh. went, you know just lived in contribution and still felt sad mm. and um, everyone that's looking at this going if I just had that one thing there's something I think we all have in the back of our head some type of winning an Oscar or getting the girl that was your dream girl from high school or or just you know having a certain body whatever it is you're in a lie right now when you think that that's going to be your source of happiness mm. because Robin Williams got to achieve all kinds of things that people thought when that happens. He's gone beyond what our dreams are of ourselves right now. You know, everything you think that you, oh, if only I had that, I'll be happy. He's gotten to achieve more than that, right? Way more. He's gotten to be accessible to and, and loved by almost everyone on this planet. Mm -hmm. And he still wasn't happy. Yeah. And I've really been taking in that that is such evidence for me to... You know, I, I, being a fast-paced talking comedian yeah, yeah. and feeling massive pain underneath that too, I had to go deeper, you mm -hmm. know? So can you, I, I feel like you're going to, but can you touch on that? Sure. Like just... Well, I know that, I know for a fact that when something happens, I'll be happy is a lie. Mm -hmm. Like, we just got to really take that in for a minute and just go look at the evidence everywhere. Even if you don't believe it through the Robin Williams incident, look at it through yourself. How many times have you said, when something happens, I'll be happy? And then you got it, and then you were just like, okay, what's next? And you didn't change, and you didn't experience that happiness. You experienced an intellectual, addictive happiness, not a soulful happiness. Most people only get to experience that happiness when they lose something massive. They get, they get to lose, you know, it's, it's when people are suddenly fighting for their life that they let go of all those other external wishes and they're, they're, they have to let go. They have to let, you know, it's when people often skydive, they have to let go yeah. and trust. There's nothing that I can do here. Yeah. 
and for a minute you get to just trust and you don't have to go skydiving to experience that <laughs> but I, I can see that there's a higher excitement to me than achieving because I've achieved a lot of things that I've wanted and there's a higher excitement that exists when we kind of delegate our happiness to something bigger and it does I don't mean the religion of God or anything like that necessarily it can be that but some people see God as an external too like if only I can get God to love me then now you're seeing that as the same as a girlfriend you know and if you look at that when you cut your arm what do you have to do for it to heal I mean just give it time like, and 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 what do you have to not do touch it okay. interfere yeah. Yeah. right so if you cut your arm you literally have to do nothing in yeah. fact doing something slows it down mm -hmm. right imagine if I cut my arm and then was like why isn't it healing and doing yeah. this for months yeah, yeah. it would never be able to heal yeah. and you can start to take that to more things like external pain back pain you know headaches whatever it is right but then you can also do that with your emotions and go wait a minute I'm not happy right now. Something's trying to heal here. Something wants to heal. And a lot of times we go, I'm not happy. And we feel a sense of pain for a second. And we then try to fix that pain versus letting that pain do what it needs to do. Letting that pain happen. You know, most of what we're doing is to avoid pain. Yeah. So we feel little glimpses of pain. But what we what taught us that way of pain? What what? How did we learn that we feel those certain pains? And usually here's why because we thought that our parents were our God. We thought that our parents were the, the most, the highest level authority figure to protect us there is. But that parent has all kinds of their own programming, so their love is very conditional. There's certain things you can get in trouble for with your parents. So we start to become like our parent to get their love, who we're trying to become like their parent. So they're not, they're not necessarily coming from, they're coming from the highest source they know, but it's not necessarily, that's what starts causing us to make decisions later. Like, have you ever had it where you feel like you want to do something, but then your mom shows up in your brain and says, you wouldn't, you, you shouldn't date someone like that. And you're just like, well, I love someone like that. But you've heard your mom say a girl like that before wouldn't be good. So you feel, a sh so you're literally in an argument with yourself. You're walking around like a crazy person with what you want truly and then what society taught you or what your mom said or what a teacher said. So you're in a fight with yourself. And our job is not to resist that, it's not to fight this, it's not to go, I think things should have been different. Instead, it's to connect to what is actually the real you. And people go, well, how do I do that? The way that I know is to feel and be patient. Stop trying to get a result. Feel that your heart is beating. It's just, and feel it. Like if you just take a second right now and you just feel that your heart is beating, which is craziness, and it's asked for nothing in return. Mm -hmm. That's nuts, yeah. right? Now, most people are gonna do this the first second, go, okay, did that work? Did that yeah, fix yeah, my yeah. problem? Now can I get the girl? But you're choosing to take your focus off of the heart again, and you're not letting the thing that heals your arm do its job. You're interfering all the time. Mm -hmm. And we have a system that is designed to keep you interfering, yeah. right? It's the social media system is designed to keep you constantly judging things and having opinions about stuff and we're two days after Robin Williams death and now everyone hates what someone else said about it and they're starting to say bad things about it and you know Fox News said this and screw mm -hmm. these people everyone needs to feel like they have some opinion because ego wants to just sustain itself that's all ego wants to do is stay alive your soul is always alive your soul is always, always, always alive. Your heart is always alive. You know, and, I, and you go, well, no, you'll die at one point. But like, whatever the hell is keeping it beating has to always be alive. It has to be, right? Like, you can look at your past and how many different belief systems have you had and how many different body types have you had. Yeah. The hair on your head is different than the hair on your head a year ago, right? So you can know when you say, I'm 160 pounds, that's a lie. Because at one point you were 140 and you still existed. Mm -hmm. You know when you say, uh, I, I believe this. Well, that's a lie because you believed other things and you were still alive then, right? So you were consistent when you had a three-year-old body and you had all these different things. So what the fuck are you yeah. that's staying connected to this whole thing? 
doesn't matter what's happening externally, that's not true. And people that think that who they are is that limited thing, then try to stay the same because they'll be dying if that thing changes. Mm. So if you think who you are is an obese person, you tell everyone all day you're obese, you won't be willing to lose weight yeah. Yeah. because you think that means you're dying. Mm. Who you are is an obese person, so mm. how could you get slim? Mm. That's why sometimes people lose weight and go right back because they had a story attached. So how do you detach yourself from those negative identities, I guess? By instead of thinking about the process of detaching from them, mm. attaching to something that's true. Mm attaching to something that, because your mind always and your soul wants to connect to something. So instead of thinking, you know, if I say, uh, let go of those keys, yeah. the second I said that, now they're in your thoughts, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. They weren't in your thought. You had actually let go of them until I said that. Yeah. So they just showed up now. Yeah. So if we think about what we need to detach from, we actually bring it into our consciousness. Mm. Does that make sense? But isn't, I mean, what about the idea of like shedding just negative and just shedding negative and just shedding negative periods? So, do you think the butterfly, the butterfly already existed under that? It was a code. Yes, it, it, it definitely you couldn't see it, mm -hmm. but um, this is this is basic Wayne Dyer kind of stuff. But an acorn, look this big, yeah. has a tree yep. naturally encoded in it. Mm -hmm. You can't see the whole tree if you cut it open, but mm -hmm. it exists. This is what Wayne Dyer said in Power of Intention, gotcha. right? So, and what has, the, what has to happen for this acorn to become a tree? It has to be put in the ground and left alone. Mm -hmm. It has to have the right water that comes from up here already. Mm -hmm. it, has to have, it has to have just sit. If you throw the thing around on the freeway, it's not going to work. If, you, if you, you, know, you pass it around, you throw it into a pool, whatever, it has to be sit, sit still, and wait. And whatever the hell is making these trees and stars takes over. That's a, I feel like that's a really hard concept for people to accept. Of that, of that's that, because yeah. Yeah, they're trying to think of it mentally because they've been trained that this is what they are. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't what you were born thinking. Yep. You were born knowing, and then you learned from the time you started having a memory mm -hmm. that life is actually, you have to work really hard to make money, and, and you have to accomplish more, and, and who you are is based on what you accomplish, and you mm -hmm. have to be better. So instead of thinking what to shed, instead of thinking, okay, I'm gonna let go of the caterpillar, think of I'm going to become the butterfly. And you do that literally by delegating all actions to whatever is doing this, by connecting to something, by just sitting. You can't sit for a month with no distractions and not evolve. If you just sat, had some healthy food, water, ate the food that was trying to come off the trees and didn't microwave it and shit, just ate it and sat still, just sat here, I guarantee you if I just sat here or sat in the woods, it sounds nuts. But I bet you anything, you would accomplish more for the world than you could being the busiest caterpillar on the planet. You know, caterpillars think, we got to do, we got to do, we got to do. Would you rather be the busiest caterpillar or would you rather be a butterfly? Because a butterfly can do nothing and everyone looks at it. A butterfly can fly across the city in a few hours. A caterpillar takes a year to cross the street, right? Mm -hmm. So the busiest caterpillar can't do shit compared to the butterfly. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it was, it, I mean, yes, it was the caterpillar at that time, and that's necessary to, to grow. But at one point it graduates, and it sits still. Think of that. It graduates and it sits still, and something new shows up and takes over. Now, if we didn't understand, if the caterpillar didn't naturally, if the caterpillar had the choice to go into that cocoon, it probably would pass. Yeah. If the caterpillar had a very abundant life as a caterpillar, if the caterpillar had been doing caterpillar movies and getting caterpillar attention and had caterpillar money, like huge, the most money that a caterpillar could make, it would have no reason to go into that cocoon. And I think that's partly what happened to Robin Williams. I think that why would he want to go into that thing when he has a life that every caterpillar says, that's the life you want? Why would I go into my heart when my mind can constantly be abundant with love and attention and everyone wanting pictures with me and everyone wanting my attention and autograph and I'm a movie star? Why would I ever want that? That's the most depressing thing in the world. Now that doesn't mean don't be a movie star, but that means move from here and let everything be a byproduct of that. I think Stevie Wonder did that. I think Stevie Wonder's music is something beyond him coming through. It's not basic chords, it's like Wow, where did that come from? Yeah. And he sings about that all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, his lyrics are all the time about 
consciousness and connecting to your soul and being awake and love, unconditional love. Same with Earth, Wind and Fire, the most de deep music. The Beatles' Abbey Road album was made after a lot of meditation, you know? It took just sitting and listening, and uh, Marian Williamson said this beautifully, but she said, um, you know, in, in Return to Love, she said, uh, Michelangelo said, when he, when he made the David, that it already existed in the rock. Mm. He just had to remove what it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So the love that you are has always existed, but you've been trained to th that you, your happiness comes from being who you aren't, going to another thing, training yourself to get here, and that you, you can be in trouble, and that you're a bad person for doing this, and a good person. And they're ignoring that there's a light inside you that's just been lying here dormant, mm -hmm. waiting to be activated. <coughs> so how do you do it? As corny as it sounds, you, you sit and you feel and stop thinking and feel and watch as the thoughts show up and because your thoughts are going to try and save their life. They're going to yeah, defend yeah, themselves. Yeah, the ego is yeah. going to be like, this is not for me. And it's going to fight and fight and fight. And you just sit and you feel. And then your mind goes, yeah, but I can't go back to the heart again. First time might take a couple seconds, then it might take, and you go back to your brain right away, then it takes five seconds. Go back to your brain, is this working, this isn't working. Because you got an attachment to feeling like a victim. Mm -hmm. So your mind doesn't want to die. Yeah. You know, if you are a caterpillar that has a story attached to being a caterpillar, why would you ever go into a cocoon and leave all your caterpillar friends and why would you go away? If you didn't know that a butterfly was at the other end of that, you wouldn't do it. Yeah. Right? And that's what we do as a society. We just are crazy. And because we aren't listening to our guidance, we have to be nuts. Because, because it has to be extreme hatred and stuff. Because if you don't have your connection to your soul, you're not moving from love. You're moving from more and more fear if you're only here. So the people that aren't connected to here are more about destroying other people and eventually themselves. Yeah. Right? Just like Marianne Williamson said, the cells in the body, the cells that are guided, that aren't you know, attached to anything, they move, man. They know what they're doing and they keep your body alive. There's a few cells that go, I'm not going to do this. And they find the other cells that, that also aren't going to do this. And that's called cancer. And its job is to destroy the body and eventually itself. Well, there's a lot of people on this planet that aren't moving from here. And they're a cancer on this planet. Mm. They're just blowing shit up. They're blowing each other up. And it's our job to go, wait, that battle that the whole planet's happening right now, where there's also people, there's people that are blowing each other up, and there's also a movement of love happening, too. There's a lot of compassion happening from a lot of tragedies happening. And that's bringing us more to love because you're starting to go, well, these wars are never ending. Are we going to ever love each other? Mm -hmm. Well, that requires us to do it. So that same battle that the planet's in, we're in inside too. Mm -hmm. The battle's like, a, the, the earth is like a person, a cell is like a person, and we're a person. They're all the same thing. How do we know we're not cells on a living planet? And this, how do we know this planet is in a cell in a giant universe that's alive too? <laughs> yeah. You know, why is it, people go, I can't believe that. Well, that's because you only think from here and, and from here you only move based on what you physically see. And what you physically see does not include radio waves, but they exist. Cell phone waves exist, but you can't see them. If you, if you told me before we ever had cell phones, I, there's something that's going to light this up and you can't see it, I would think you're crazy. But when my phone rings, because you sent a signal from a totally different location, mm. I'd get proof of it. Now my senses believe it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So we can't just move from what our cells told us. Our, our, our senses told us. It's yeah, insanity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can't move from that. That's insane. And everyone that's moving just from their senses is missing out on connection, guidance, love. And we only are that. And we have to ask ourselves, how many times am I going to go down the road of when something happens, I'll be happy, to get that that road leads nowhere? Mm -hmm. Robin Williams is the most beautiful proof of that in the most tragic way. He's, he had everything, and there's so many stars that either go crazy, they get into drugs, or they become major spiritual and go through what I'm talking about. Because they go, well, Jim Carrey went through the same thing, man. Comedy is a huge deflection from meeting your soul. Robin Williams could outwit anybody, and How he was outwitting feel? himself. How do you feel about that being a comedian? Well, I know all about it. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. 23 years of, of being funny and using that as a way to get a woman or to get attention or get an agent. And whenever anything was uncomfortable, I could be funny. Yeah. Right? So instead of facing the uncomfortable thing head on, we could all laugh. I know a comedian that's obese and I'd talk to him about being healthy and he'd make a joke about donuts and deflect it right away. Like, 
and nothing would happen in the change of his body because he couldn't face the real truth that he had this addiction. Mm. So comedy is wonderful and it's, it's wonderful to be able to look at life and have a meaning of laughing at it too. But you got to make sure that you're not outwitting yourself from your soul. Mm. If you can bring your soul into what you're doing, then it's the most amazing thing in the world. Yeah. If comedy is coming without the soul, it's, it's, it's you hurting yourself from your truth. Mm. You know? And I knew a lot of comics that you can't even talk to them without jokes. Because mm. they're so uncomfortable. And I can tell you how many relationships I've lost or ruined because I got them because they were fans of my comedy. Mm. They'd see me at a show or something, we'd start dating. And then I was horrified of what was beyond the jokes. Mm. There was only so long I could sustain this distraction before I could be real with them and go, I don't know who I am beyond this shit. Mm. It's, I'm just a giant mask. And there's no soul connection and I'm just doing this to get you. And then, I mean, I didn't have the ability to be that honest, but that's what I discovered later that like, who am I under all that shit? And everybody has deflections. Almost everybody has some type of identifiable deflection, whether it be going, you tell them something from your heart and they go, oh, I know, I already knew that. And you're just like, you just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just took my point and did this. Mm -hmm. they, uh, or they, you tell them something, they go, oh, that happened to me once, and da 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 da, -da and you're like, you didn't hear me, you don't feel heard, right? Comedy's a huge one. I know so many people that you just don't feel heard. And, I would say to people, ask yourself, do the people around you feel heard? And do they feel received? Because our problem isn't giving love as much as it is receiving it. Yeah. We're scared to receive love, you know? When you tell someone all this real stuff and they're, they, they can't handle it, mm. you don't feel, they can only create insipid relationships in their life and connect with someone else who also can't handle it. And they can just talk about sports forever and not go deeper. That will be a very addictive life because if you're not connecting deep, you have to have as much numbing the pain as possible, right? You have to numb the pain because you're living in a lie and deep down you know it. So you connect to here or you're only connecting from here, you're going to feel a lack of guidance and you're going to be addicted to everything. Yeah. And, and this has probably happened to you a few times I imagine, but when do you feel like you stop living your life in your life? What points? If you could pinpoint them, or it's just been well, it's. I guess. I think that I'm. We're all always in some sort of a lie, and I think that. It's not that I had a moment where I could identify that I'd been in a lie. It's. It's not that. It's like, I now could look at, basically, what we are is awareness. That's what I think we are. I'm now the, and it's always changing. I'm now the awareness that sees that in my 20s I was living that life, but in that life my awareness wasn't as big enough to see it, mm. right? Mm. So what happens to a child? Like a kid could say something and you know, and they'll be like, and this cartoon does this, and this cartoon does this, and you're like, oh, but you're, because you're more aware that what he's saying is so annoying. If he became aware that what he's saying is annoying, he wouldn't say it, right? <laughs> it's cute too, I'm not saying like that. <laughs> But that's what's cute, is small awareness there. Oh, look at the awareness of the baby in survival mode. Just living his life surviving is so cute. You want to protect him. He's precious, right? That's awareness, right? His awareness is so small. And honestly, a baby's awareness is enormous and small. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there's the first stage where you don't know and you don't know that you don't know. Yeah. And the second stage is you don't know but you know that you don't know. Yeah. Right? That's when you kind of started hearing stuff I was saying at an event and you were like, Oh, maybe there's more for me to learn. Yeah. The third stage is you know, but you don't understand that you know. Mm. That's where you get it intellectually, but you don't get that you can be it. Right? And the fourth one is you know and you know that you know. Mm. So that's where, and I think that I'm always in a stage of that third one, and then I have glimpses of the fourth one, and I think yeah. we all have that. Is it Thursday? Jesus Christ. I got, a, I got a big insight coming in that I can say. Yeah! Good insights. I love them. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we lost the battery, so I'll oh, say yeah. one other thought. <laughs> the real question is this. We're all a certain level of awareness. Are we matching that awareness? Do our actions match what we're aware that we are capable of being mm. or doing? Mm. Right? So, like, there are people who sit here and go, 
I know I could change the world, but they stay at a job they hate and they stay in a situation they hate. That person will be more stressed than a guy who doesn't know he can change the world and is in that job. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because this guy sees that this is possible, but he's living here. This and is friction to the real self. Yeah. Right? Your real self knows about this. This is why we're, our job is to just follow what our highest feeling is. Yeah. Right? And I have to give credit to you on that one because that's why I couldn't go back to work. Is because when you helped me realize that I can quit, like there was no, I couldn't, this was like the matrix. It was like I couldn't know that and not, and go back to work. Well, you, and you know what my real job is at those events? Mm -hmm. Without being able to ever say this on the, you know, be insane to say on a radio show ad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my job is to raise the room's awareness mm -hmm. by raising my own awareness. Yeah. And so if you become aware, that you're worth more, mm -hmm. you would hate yourself staying in here, yeah, yeah. right? And you won't stay in mediocre things. But if you see who you are as you're in this survival type state where you're just here to, to consume and get as much as you can, you'll be really happy even if you're in the shittiest relationship because mm -hmm. you think who you are is nothing anyway. Very true. But if what you get is that your job is to just keep raising your awareness but matching what you've just raised, like you came out and worked with me today, and now you're more aware than when you got here. Yeah. yeah. What you know now, it would be insane if you did things the same way mm. that you did before you got here. Mm -hmm. But now you you see and get that you're there's a new thing for you to do. There's a new compassion you need to have for yourself. There's a new service to <coughs> to to switch with people. Yeah. You need to think of them more than you. That kind of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if you think of you, you're aware that you shouldn't be doing it. Mm. So the question of when that you asked earlier, when did I know that I was living in that lie? Yeah. It's not that. It's that my awareness kept growing, and at one point, I didn't match it, so I had to match it, and all of a sudden, I started moving along with the awareness. So at one point, when my awareness was like, "There's more than this. You're you're bigger than just doing." <laughs> the, the, the soul was saying, "Dude, there's something bigger. I can't tell you what it is, but there's something bigger than having international Comedy Central specials. Mm -hmm. That's pretty big." Mm. So I had to throw that out and stay in alignment with this. Yeah. Because if I didn't throw it out, then I'd be living in a lie. Even though what I'm doing compared to society would seem really amazing, in my heart, it's not the highest. It's not the truest. And if I live in that lie, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your level of awareness is at all. What matters is you're living true to whatever that level is. Mm. Does that get frustrating for you that you know you can always go higher and deeper, and that it's almost like that sort of expectation, and that not, I don't know if this is completely accurate, but right? you're not completely at peace with where you're at because you know there's more? Does that make sense? Yes and no. It's Here's where it's frustrated is if I'm in my head. Because your mind goes, well, how do I get there and what do yeah, I do? Yeah, because, yeah, 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 it's a crazy space of like, now it's a place where it's like, dude, I think your job is to not be on Facebook anymore and you really need to connect. My highest excitement is not achieving anything. My highest excitement is to connect with soul and then let that be let that be the, the, the prerequisite before I do any action, Yeah. right? So now I'm in this place where it's just like, well, I got nothing to do. Mm -hmm. I, and, and the ego goes, no, we got to do something. But it gets also very easy because it's like, I just got to do nothing. It's like, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a choice. It's actually the most easiest and the most hardest thing at the same time. Mm. It's the hardest thing from here. It's the easiest thing from here. Mm. You can't do it from here. Mm. A caterpillar can't physically turn into a butterfly. It has to die. A caterpillar itself can't do the work of turning into a butterfly. It, that's what most people are trying to do. I want to have a breakthrough. That's like a caterpillar going, I'm going to do the work of turning into the butterfly. Mm. No, you go into the cocoon and let something else turn you into the butterfly. Yeah. Right? Whether it be someone with higher awareness or you just let whatever the hell's growing my hair without asking for what well, most of it, <laughs> without asking for any action from me at all. Yeah. In fact, people that try to bring action into stuff get stressed. Yes. Yeah. So they put resistance in their body. Yeah. There's something beating your heart, not asking for anything. And when you're stressed and you're trying to make something happen, you get resistance. So you're actually fighting the thing that's making your heart yeah. beat. So you're actually, the more action you put into it often, the more illness you're going to feel and the mm -hmm. earlier you'll die because you're, you're fighting what is. You're mm -hmm. fighting your guidance. Mm. That's why people with a lot of stress end up dying quicker. Yeah. Heart disease and cancer and things show up under stress. Mm -hmm. Well, stress happens because you're resisting the natural self. That's all it is. And let me, so you're saying some 
amazing things, but what are the tangible things that people can do? And you mentioned meditation, that's obviously a big one, but if you could just break it down simple for people, because I mean, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that one thing that matters is where each individual person is in their life. Mm -hmm. Because some people, I don't necessarily say go right to meditation yeah, because yeah, yeah. they need to first of all experience how powerful they are in their ego. Mm. You know, because some people are just victims and then they let go, but they haven't experienced how powerful that victim state can be and you can go into achieving massive things. In other words, when I was doing all my Comedy Central stuff and everything, if I just went straight to meditation mm. versus learning that I can have the number one special, I would never have understood that when the happy, when the things happen, I'll be happy equation is not true. Mm. Right? So think of yourself as wow. a balloon. Yeah. And think of the balloon as not blown up. If you're, if you're like 19 and you haven't got to experience taking over your life and grabbing the steering wheel of your life, that'd be like me trying to pop a balloon with no air in it mm. if I'm saying let's meditate. Mm. First, let's blow the balloon up mm. and have you get that this thing can happen. Well, there's people that have achieved massive things. Yeah. You could look at someone like Donald Trump and be like, dude, you got to experience achieving a ton of shit. Let's let go for a while. Yeah. Let's move to compassion now. Oh. I want to pop his balloon because it's fucking full. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and you're saying people really have to go through those stages. And I know you, you kind of mentioned that on stage of where if there's someone who's really stuck and you sense it, you have to let them crash, more or less, yes. in order to, instead of trying to prevent them from that, because from that crash, they're gonna learn and be able to grow and be able to One one mistake bigger. One mistake people make all the time is when they have their first breakthrough, they expect everyone else to have it. Mm. <laughs> and what one of the... <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And I went through it for years, man. I went to a Tony Robbins thing, and I had a breakthrough at yeah. Tony Robbins, and I thought everyone needs to go to Tony Robbins. Yeah. But you know what the other factor was? Mm. I almost killed myself right before that. Mm. So I was at a low, and when you're at a low, you're wide open. Yeah. And when you're wide open, you listen intently, and you learn what you need to learn. But we're trying to tell people to change before they've hit their low. You know when you're like 21 and you heard of people that found Jesus and you thought they were nuts? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, that's what we look like when we go through a seminar and want everyone to know how free they can be. Mm. They need to, first of all, want to be free. They might actually even, let me rephrase that, they're already free in that they don't know that there's more yet. Right? You don't take a baby caterpillar and put him in the cocoon. Mm, wow. The baby caterpillar's got to learn and finish and complete being a caterpillar yeah. before cocoon time. Wow. Right? Yeah. So if you're trying to tell people to do it that aren't asking for it. See, when I have a seminar, I uh, invite people that are asking for it. Mm -hmm. And and you come and you, you invest in your time and your money and coming to be there. You would only do that if you're seeking. Right? Then I'm ready for you. But I've learned after five years of doing it myself to stop telling people that they need to change. Because some people actually are comfortable in their being miserable. Some people are comfortable in their lack of achievement. Some people are achieving enough and need to achieve it more. You know, some people just, that's the wiring. They just aren't going to hit this. Mm. And it's okay. Some people stay in enough happiness their whole life that they didn't hit the low. And some people just want to be addicts. You know, so you just go, go for it. And I'm not here to stop everyone else from their life and tell them I know the route for them. Mm. You know, I'm here to live mine at my highest and express whatever I can as I learn it. So if I go up to someone on the street and I'm just like, you gotta change, you gotta change. They're not asking for it. That's mm. just harassment, you know? But if I'm, if I'm, I find that with people that are close to me because they're not necessarily seeking, you know, my mom or, or my brother or something like that, yeah. where I'm trying to shift them. When did, have you always had this itch to evolve and like self-improve and like how much of it is from like reading or books or taking in information and life experiences? I don't know if that question really 
Sure. I don't know how that question just came out. But do you, do you see what I'm saying? That like, means it's a real question. Yeah. That means it's from your heart. Yeah. You're not yeah. thinking what's the right question to ask for the interview. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. thinking, what do I want to know from here? Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so I will say that my buddy Justin pointed out that a factor in, you know, when I ever I say Tony Robbins and Michael Beckwith and all these people, Tony, my, my buddy Justin points out, when you were a kid, Kyle, I said, when you were 12, you still were creating events. When you were 15, you were, you were renting out high school theaters and you were doing all these things. And I was always thinking in a very creative way. Mm -hmm. And I think a factor to that was me wanting to get my mom's approval before mm -hmm. I was aware that that's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And me wanting to get love and me seeing that my family all accepted entertainment. You know, my, my dad's mom was on the Carol Burnett show. My uncle was a, Gall a prop man for Gallagher. None of those things were direct ins to the to yeah. industry, yeah. but it was a given to me that this is an, a life that's acceptable. Mm. So when I was 15, I just was like, oh, how do I impact people more? How do I make more money? How do I do this? And I did all kinds of very creative things to get attention and to create and to live in my dream. But the problem was, what I wasn't aware of was that my dream was the addiction. That my only happiness was on that stage. Mm -hmm that I brought my stage into my life all the time, that if, if you didn't know who I was, this is what I wasn't aware of until later. Once you're aware of something, it's gone. Once you become aware of something, it's a choice if you're gonna do it again. Like Bashar is a speaker that I really like in, in a lot of areas, and he says, here's what a definition of a habit is. A habit is something you do over and over and over again because you don't know you're doing it. Once you know you're doing it, it's a choice. So once you're simply aware of what you're doing, it's now a choice if you're going to keep doing it. When you go, I'm an addict, I can't stop eating food, okay, you actually believe and your identity is that you think a genetic problem you have is you have to start eating food all the time. Once you're aware that's not true, it's now a choice if you're going to keep that story, right? And when you're keeping that story, you're lying to yourself, so you'll actually gain a lot of weight because you're living in a lie with yourself and you're only doing that to protect yourself, so your body wants to protect itself so it gets fatter. Isn't that crazy? So it pads itself. Mm. So, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that answered your question. Okay, gotcha. I, I always had that element, and what was amazing about going to those seminars was they said something that I already felt, mm. but it gave me permission to feel it bigger. Yeah. And I think everyone has that experience. You know, what other people do when they talk to people who are doubters is it gives them permission to feel their fears bigger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So whoever you're around gives you permission to feel whatever you felt. And you felt both things, but your heart goes, I feel this, but there's no one really around to confirm it. Mm -hmm. Unless you go to a big seminar, or positive, there's a few positive people that'll say that to you. But yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so for the person who would, I think I have to phrase this. For the person who you would consider as living with external validation, as feeling extremely stuck, extremely low, and just living from a place of like very little love for themselves, what do you think is the most important small thing, if nothing else, that well, they could do for themselves? One is that hopefully this interview already shed, yeah. created an awareness that doesn't even give them a job necessarily, but just makes them look at it in a new way. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's. My purpose sometimes isn't only to give them an action, but to just get them to go, oh, like, yeah. sometimes there's less work to be done. Mm. Sometimes you, you know, you get that there's a light inside you, that you're unlimited, that you're free. It doesn't matter what you call it, universe, God, your soul, you, it doesn't matter if you're an atheist, it doesn't matter, that you can look in just the evidence of you go on a date with someone, someone who really wants to be with you, mm -hmm. what do you feel? The, that um that like wanting to wanting to get that person I guess you could say yeah but what do you feel if someone's sitting across from you like, like just nervous. wanting to be with yeah. you and do oh. you, you know they're like oh man this you're on a date with someone and she's yeah. like oh this is really good I mean oh, yeah, we could be together yeah, yeah. forever yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you know it's like really it's really uncomfortable yeah. because you what are you hearing she doesn't think she's worthy of me mm -hmm. right now what if you go on a date with a woman and she's just connected yeah she's just connected to herself she's not doing anything mm -hmm. she's not fixing she's not apologizing she's not creating a, a situation to be different she's just being yeah now you're comfortable with her yeah right because there's so there's nothing to do 
It's like let it do its thing. Let it heal the pet. Wow. So, so there are actions people can do, and I think one action is to take a breath, forgive yourself. You know, you said love yourself in one of the videos, and I want to even add to that that I don't even think there's a job to do there. That you are love. If you feel your heart for a while, you'll feel love. It, it shows up right away. That if you're trying to feel love, you can't. But if you understand you are love, you just fall back that all you could be is love. Because you can't be your body, you can't be your mind, you can't be your story. You're just love. Mm. Fall into it. Mm. Sit for an hour, two hours. Sit mm. on the couch. Close your eyes. Sit comfortably. Don't fall asleep. And just feel feel else all this pain comes up and goes, I can't do this. Think how insane that is. I can't sit still. That's fucking nuts. And that's what everyone starting meditation does. Oh, I can't meditate. What? You're this crazy fixing person that has to run around to whatever society throws you? Mm -hmm. That's not better, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You should be able to sit <laughs> and chill and watch as these thoughts come up that go, I can't do this, and allow a compassion to show up to match that fear. Mm -hmm. And just allow these thoughts and love them. Don't try to fix them and let them come out for the first time. You know, picture if you, you pop a zit and the pus is trying to come out and you're just shoving it back in because you think who you are is the pus. <laughs> yeah. Right? You're just like, no, get in the zit. You know, or your pee. You're peeing. You're like, no, get in the dick. Get back in my <laughs> dick. Oh, God, now I gotta. Like you're just holding it. You're yeah. holding it. That's what people are doing with their emotions. Just holding it. Yeah. For years. Holding their dick. Until they years. finally have like bladder cancer, because they've been holding them. Just let the pee out, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you didn't know about letting the pee out, it, if you felt this thing wanting to come out, you'd be horrified if you didn't know about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You wouldn't let the flow of your body. And that's, by the way, why people that do this will suddenly notice they have to go to the bathroom instantly. Because uh -huh. their, their body that was holding on to yeah. their story is also holding on to their crap and their defense and their piss and everything. Like, yeah. That's why we perspire and shit. Your body is holding on to your sweat and not letting it come out naturally. It's like mm. defending itself mm. and, and, and creating this abnormal flow. Yeah. Your body knows how to do everything. You have nothing to do. Yeah. And, and by the way, that takes care of your financial journey and everything. This is the longest interview. It's, that's, it's amazing. But it comes it's out amazing. when you're, when you, I'm not trying, right? It's yeah. what's coming through. Not, that's yeah. not me saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It couldn't be me saying it because I'm discovering it as I'm saying it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How could I be hearing this and learning from it at the same time? Aren't I two people then? Mm. Aren't there two, how, wouldn't there have to be two me's if I just taught myself that shit by saying it out loud? Yeah. Like, all I'm doing is getting inspired by what's coming out of my mouth. So there has to be the me that's saying it and the me that heard it. Yeah, that's that's nuts. I right. mean, it, it, it's nuts to think that you're actually living from that place, if that makes sense. And I'm, I'm not sure, but I feel like it's not constant that you're constantly in that centered observing. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you get caught up, usually when I want something really bad. Mm. It's around relationships, this area. That's the area that I've had a challenge with. Because the idea of relationships is your mind. Mm. And and sometimes I see that as the reverse of love. Mm. Your mind, here's all the things you can't do. Mm. I'm gonna get mad at you if you talk to that ex. I'm gonna get mad at you if you flirt with that person. I, that's control. So suddenly, a lot of times when I'm in relationships as a traditional relationship, I cut off the unlimited flow to myself because I've been taught so much from movies and everything that you complete me and all this shit. Mm -hmm. And then we try to own each other. That's great for two people that are addicts, but I'm trying to not be. I'm trying to connect to my soul, mm. and I can only find someone who's connected to their soul. Mm. And I find that a lot of people, you know, they're in fear, you know, and they're in a place of, of I want you to be mine, and then I feel a, a, a control over me and I, of ways that I can get in trouble, and. I feel uh, that I have the right to control them, and all of a sudden I'm in my head and not my heart anymore. Mm -hmm. Isn't that ironic? Yeah. Love is is the only thing that I'm trying to be, and relationships often <laughs> pull out the opposite of that. Yeah. Right? Where do you think that comes from? I think that comes from society's definition of a relationship. Okay. That society has taught us that I'm sad without you, yeah. and every love song is I need you, and that kind of shit. So people have a deep conditioning that they're incomplete without someone. Mm. And people go to a story of loneliness when they don't have someone. And 
that's a lie. Mm -hmm. Whether it's painful to hear, but it's a lie. Mm -hmm. And even people in amazing couples, that's great. But understand that that this person completes me is a lie. Mm -hmm. Because if you think that person completes you, you think that person is your heir, mm -hmm. you will now hold them too tight because you think they're your God. Mm -hmm. And you will ruin it. If that person is the only heir you have, well, what if they cheat on you? Yeah. What if they leave you? Then you can be a big victim and tell everyone how they ruined your life. Mm. No one can ruin my life. Mm. I'm complete. Yeah. And I, I, I find that there's someone in my life that I realize knows that she's complete too. Mm. And I'm starting to feel that we both have that thing where we're just taking it massively slowly. Mm. And just going, I just like ease. I don't want ownership of you. You do what you want, I'll do what I want. Okay. And that's love to me. I love you. I want you to... One time I broke up with a girl and I was really sad about it. And my brother said, why are you sad? And I said, because I'm going to lose her. And he goes, oh, you think you're in this for you? He goes, if you love her, you want her happy no matter who takes care of her. Mm. You want her happy no matter how she needs to have that happiness. If you want you to be the one to make her happy, then you're saying you want the credit for it. You want, this isn't even about her happiness. This is about you being the one who gave it to her. And that's selfish. Mm. It was a big deal for me. Yeah. You know? And yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of times where I lose my alignment. And I believe that everything's supposed to be so much more effortless. I stopped auditioning for movies and got more of them. Uh -huh. You know, I, I didn't even create a book outline and did a live speech from my heart and I had a publisher offer me a book. Yeah. I believe relationships should be that easy too. Mm. So I'm going to just wait until that alignment's obvious. Mm. That I, I'm not in trouble all the time and she's not in trouble all the time. Mm. That we don't own each other. Yeah. You know? Um, and I, I feel like I, I'm not sure if I'm on the mark with this, but I feel like there was a specific event where you kind of moved from that trying to allowing. If you could speak yes. on that. There was, actually. Um, well, life changes when you... And then also, as a follow-up, do you feel like... And you, you kind of mentioned it, but do you feel like you revert back into trying... You know, like, in, but... Hmm. Do you feel like you revert back into trying, but then you just recognize it as like, oh, I need to go back into allowing? So those are two questions and answers, yes. however you feel. And I find that... <laughs> My challenge is, and if I'm in a relationship with someone who moves more from trying than allowing, I often do too, mm, right? Yeah. Because I'm trying to match them, I'm very empathetic. Yeah. So if they're not coming to me as a student, right, then I can't bring them out to something. I can't give them advice all day. So I have to be with someone who's also only about allowing, mm. right? So um, tell me your question again, I'm sorry. Uh, um, so essentially, thank, thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to hold it yeah. down. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> you guys are awesome. So, shout out to uh, Carrie and Dan for filming, for being out here with us. We're out here um, with Kyle Cease, just hanging out, drinking some Mountain Valley At the water. pool. This At is, the pool. This is an example of, I sold my house, and I moved to this place that's way cheaper. And everyone's like, why would you sell your house? Because I don't believe in investing in mm. this market. Mm. I believe in investing in my creativity. Mm. Yeah. And this place, you don't know, pair care if you want to pan and show the pool and the and the. This is this is one fourth as much. Yeah, I don't own the place. I just rent here. But I'm happier. Isn't that more happier? Yeah. Instead of planning for the future all the time. And the happier you get. More. Oh, I like this more. Yeah, it's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, I forget what your question was. Um, what was the question? Oh, yeah. So the moment or the event that you feel triggered from trying to allowing, and so it, if we could touch on that a little bit, I sure. mean, I know you did, but the way I interpret trying is essentially that make it happen want yeah. of energy which is, that like forcing which is cool but when you say I'm going to make this happen and yeah. you see the vision if you can see what you want from where you're starting mm -hmm. if you can see the exact thing you want you're sitting here in your chair and going in three months from now I'm gonna have a million dollars and you can see the entire route of how you're going to get there from now you are deciding to control the entire vision and bring nothing more in mm. Right? There's not an unfolding that's happening. It's you will stay the same and put a million bucks in the account. There's no growth there, except for that you can see you can do that. So at first I went through the make it happen stage, 
which was where I was achieving number one Comedy Central special by writing all day and doing this thing. It's funny now, without effort, I feel like I could do a better special, right? But, you know, I was going to have a number one, I'm going to do this thing, this thing, this thing. So there's a lot of control there. Well, at one point, I had to release, I had to release this make it happen attitude. And I sat in a hotel for six days, just totally depressed out of my mind. And in four days, my mind for the first four days was trying to achieve its way out of it. I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll show him. And then on day four, I suddenly noticed this achiever guy was outside of me. I was looking at the achievements and the thoughts that I could do. And suddenly I was the one in this moment looking at the, at the story. Mm. And I became the observer of my thoughts versus the thoughts. Yeah. Once I became the observer, I realized I'm just this moment sitting here looking at this bullshit story, not the story. So I was free. The whole story collapsed, my identity collapsed, everything. And I was free. And with that freedom, I lost being nervous. Ugh. I lost the need to make it work a certain way. And in that effortlessness, everything happened. You know, it was very easy for me to go on stage and just ad lib an hour that was better than anything I had ever done. You know, so. Well, what's interesting though is you only got to that allowing, like you said, by being and trying and by being an achievement. Focus. Yes, I had to go through that. I had to see that I could, that was my route. Yeah. I had to see that I could accomplish these things first. Yeah. And show myself that, look, when you think you'll get this, you'll be number one and you'll be happy? Well, here it is. Okay, why aren't I happy? Right? Yeah. yeah. So that was an interesting realization. Why aren't I happy? Yeah. So, now I'm about happiness first. Happiness has to be first. And by happiness, I don't mean fake smile Ned Flanders shit. I mean connecting to what is real. What's real? The only thing that's real is love. It has to be. Everything else is transient. That's all that is running all of this. Gorgeous scenery and tree. Uh, how could it be anything else? This is just yeah. creation. That's the truth. It's just creating. Not Adam and Eve creation. Like, <laughs> creating. It's just growing out of somewhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There has to be some space that's allowing these trees to do and some energy's got to be doing something. Yeah. I don't mean what... That's something Christians say a lot and I don't mean it that way. There's got to be a guy making... I don't mean that. I mean, if you just... What is the energy and what's the... What... I get that the science be behind how my heart beats, but why is it beating? What yeah. decided that? Yeah. Right? I don't know. And I'm okay with not knowing. But it, there's something I'm, I'm connected to. That's the biggest, that's one of the biggest things I can tell you. Love not knowing. I don't know what happens when I die, and I'm okay with that. I don't know how long we'll be together, and I'm okay with that. I don't know when I'll die, and I'm okay with that. I don't know where this earth started, and I'm okay with that. I don't know how. You know, so many people try to figure out a tangible answer that maybe is farther beyond what our mind can comprehend. Mm. So instead of, instead of trying to figure out what it is so you have full ownership of it, connect with it. Mm. There's a book I read that said, you know, if, when Ben Franklin discovered electricity, we didn't all worship Ben Franklin, mm. have little Ben Franklin pendants, mm. and I go to church of Ben Franklin, we, yeah, yeah. we used electricity. Yeah. Well, why wasn't that the same with Jesus? When he showed us love, why didn't we also adapt the principle of love and instead worship the guy who talked about it? Mm. <laughs> right? Mm. right? You don't worship the dude. We still use... We like Steve Jobs, and it was yeah. great what he introduced to us, but yeah. we, we use the shit. Right? Yeah. We use this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not sitting here with Steve Jobs pendants, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. going to church with Steve Jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We use it. And we need to use the one most important factor in the whole damn thing. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to admit, I was trying to be... I was trying to listen to what you're saying, but I was thinking of the next question. That's why I was like... That was awesome that you admitted it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I know for myself... But you, should you should probably at one point, too, I would just suggest rap soon because... Yes, yes. You'll be throwing out a two-hour video and no one will click it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be editing this, so I'm going to oh, chop shit. it. <laughs> I know, just make you look terrible. Well, like, no, it's like... not that. It's that really be careful on this because okay. this was an organic flow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And I've had so many things in the entertainment world that were edited wrong, mm. that took the flow out. Mm. And really make sure that if we have a flow-based answer, okay. 
that it stays and flows because if you start showing just like last segments when I called back to something that's not there yeah you know what I mean yeah it won't be real flow I feel you so I would say don't do too much to it that's my challenge right now is I'll take literally 40 I'll hang out with someone for two three hours because it takes time for someone to warm up it takes time for someone to speak essentially and speak it would only take someone time to warm up if they thought that the interview was really important. Mm -hmm. If you understand that that's just a part of life, you're already mm -hmm. warm. Yeah. You live that way. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's all good. Um, but I, but I want to. I just recommend that if you're editing, this is something for people that are editing. A lot of times they're editing from a place of what would people like to see exactly. versus what does my soul feel? And that's I can challenge. edit so yeah. fast yeah. because I just go, that doesn't feel good, that feels good, that doesn't feel good, that feels good, that's it. I don't go, will that sell? Will that get views? You'll never get views that way because you're trying to get and that getting, is sh that's what they're picking up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Just have an organic conversation and let the results do what they do. Because even if 10 people see this, mm -hmm. I'd rather impact the 10 people for real than us trying to manipulate it to get 1,000 people that won't get it as well. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a recommendation. I, I, I appreciate it. And I'm trying to receive it. Yeah. But there's <laughs> less work to do. Yeah. How, how long did it record? It's probably about 45 minutes to an hour right now. I'd say let's wrap. Yeah. Let I them, agree. let them, You if you can upload an hour, Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah, it might be slow on getting the views, but it'll be teeth views, meaning like it'll have teeth in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'll be it'll be real views. Do you wanna do you wanna just we'll just wrap up and then we'll keep on talking if that's okay with Sure, you. I gotta go fairly yeah, soon. Okay. But that works, that works. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so uh <laughs> speak real, we're hanging out with Kyle. <laughs> Thanks a million for Thank everything, you, man. honestly. That's the realest I know. I hope that Yeah, it was pretty real. You got it was, the job. It was very man. real. And you I'm proud of you. Thank you. Honestly. This guy leapt. He leapt his, his old story, and now he gets to learn how deep the rabbit hole goes. Nah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, that's what's it's going on, is now it's you're in a whole... This is a journey. You're now in a totally different direction. Yeah. Right? Oh, and you're going to yeah. discover new shit every minute now that you'd never have learned yeah. if you stayed there. Yeah. That's the biggest thing, is I... Is no matter how much I beat myself up, I know... Just the thought of me being at my old job is like hell for me. Like just thinking that I'd have to be there for another, it's been a month, but thinking that I'd have to be there for another month is like, uh, yeah. like vomit. So. Well, the new question is, what do you have to offer the world? Not what, it, what can you do in front of everyone for yourself. Mm -hmm. What do you have to offer the world? Mm -hmm. How can you bring yourself out beyond yourself? So do you think that's, because, I mean, the biggest thing I took from it is just being still and meditating. And I'm an overthinker, 100%. Okay, so I need to be careful of how I phrase things. Um, anyways, I'm just going to speak from where I'm at sure. and, and what I'm feeling. And so, I feel like an overthinker. And I feel like that's... You've been how one. I, okay. You've yeah. been one. I've been an overthinker. And um, as a result that of that, I'll, I've been overcomplicating a lot of things. And so... How much of that is <laughs> like that sitting still or doing things like that? Like, okay, what do I have to offer people? And then maybe thinking in terms of like what people want as opposed to what I want to give to people. Does that make sense? Well, you can bring out what you want to give to people and still match what they want. They don't yeah. have to be, you don't have to be a slave. I mean, if you wanted to do just what they wanted, you'd still work for that old job. Mm -hmm. And what you want, you might realize, is something they want. Yeah. What you want to do, if you really own what you do, and you go, and you still have a little bit of, here's how I can bring that into your company. Or here's how I can add, think of this question, instead of like, how do I do this the right way? What can I add to people's lives? How can I capture a moment for people? That, that unconsciously, I think, is a thing that I'm trying to offer in this interview, right? Mm. What can I offer people watching this? Your own freedom. I want to, I, I've said this before, I want to abolish mental slavery. Everyone's in a cage and they don't have to be. Mm. You know? Yeah. And that's what I can add. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what can you add to the world? You're bringing this interview and you're, in, you're responsible for this too. Yeah. So you're asking questions that a lot of people have, so you're now contributing, yeah. right? Yeah. What else can you contribute to the world with your talents? You're 27 years old. That means you have 27 years experience. 
Yeah. That, whatever you did, even if it was crapping for 27 years, yeah, yeah, yeah. even if it was watching TV for 27 years, yeah. you did that. You can add to people's lives with that and go, yeah. you know, here's the best TV shows to watch. Here's the worst. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Whatever you did, you have experience at it. Even if you did a different thing every day, even if you did nothing, yeah. you could be an expert on doing nothing, which is what the whole teaching is. <laughs> right? Yeah. So. Yeah. So I'd say the number one thing is be okay with yourself. When your thoughts come up about how crazy it is, be okay with those thoughts. Love them. You're not the thoughts. Thoughts are like a thunderstorm and you're the sky. Yeah. Sky. <laughs> Alright guys. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> ah, man. Yeah. Thanks again, man. Thank you, honestly. Buddy. Thank I you. had a good time. Yeah. I hope that hope that helps. That was awesome. I can't wait to see it. I'll I'll share it with my people too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be great.